more. Get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, I'm gonna shine. Life is good. I'm doing fine. Ten, gonna do it right and do it again. Yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out. I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening, and together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me. That's right. Hello and welcome to Experience Michiana. This is Irish Dave, Courtney and Kelly, and we're here at Southgate Crossing. And I was here a few weeks ago on the show, and we just talked to one vendor that's here, but then I thought, you, we should all come back and talk to everybody here, because yeah. it's such a great spot. I haven't been here in a while, and there's tons of people in there. There's lots of business options. Yes. Really, all the shopping that we could do. I know, I know. I'm really excited. And I actually went in there a little bit before we, we, we started the show. And I saw something there, and they were talking about grandmothers. Yes. This is all the signs about grandmothers. Okay, and I'm just going to say, <laughs> listen, Michiana, you will never see this again in the winter. But I have to show off my BB shirt uh -huh. because I am now a grandmother. Congratulations. And, and they, thank you, Kelsey, Dave, and Courtney, they bought this, this shirt for me. <laughs> but Bibi is actually grandmother in Swahili. Nice. Which is kind of That's a demon. So I know, it's all sweet, but anyway, he's adorable. Oh my gosh, Kel Kelsey, can we put some pictures here? Can I show him? All right, so you're going to see some pictures. <laughs> so but there's, there's, there's always like, good things uh, to happen here. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to be shopping for myself and for my new grandson. Perfect. Perfect. And you know, I actually brought my mom here. She was over from Ireland. Yeah. And you know, I was like, hey, you're going to love this place so much. And it's so different when you see it like full of people it's great mm -hmm. so she bought a hoodie that said something like nobody said or i never said i was mature or something it says oh on the my front gosh of it. i like, love your she's like 69 years <laughs> old and she's like you know um, but no it's a great spot so i think we need to go in talk to some of the vendors yeah. in there talk to mike the owner and just find out what southgate crossing is all about let's do it let's do it all right, all right. so i'm here with mike who's the co-owner of southgate crossing mike how do you even go about owning a building like this <laughs> It seems like a huge mental undertaking, I'm sure as well as financial, but it's such a big thing to take on. Oh yeah, uh, my, my fiance and I, um, about, about a year and a half ago, started talking to the owners of the building and, and uh, thought it'd be great to bring it back to life and yeah. um, you know, really do something with it. We've always loved the building and have been here multiple times before. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, and we, we're just so excited to have it and so excited to you know, actually, you know, put things in and have yeah. people come through and and uh, um, you know shop and enjoy it yeah and I've been here on my own I've been here once for a segment on uh, WNIT but I also brought my mom back on a Saturday when it was like just hustle and bustle of it was great what I really do love about it is is that it allows a lot of vendors who may not have the capital to be able to say get a storefront it allows them to come in. Is that a big part of your mission as well, to give access to them, to customers? Oh yeah, um, we, we have uh, about 80, 85 vendors yeah. um, that are here every day, or uh, their stuff's here at least. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but then, then, you know, like when you came with your mom, that was an additional market, so we had a 50 additional vendors. Yeah. Um, we do those uh, probably, you know, eight or, eight or 10 of those throughout the year. Yeah. Um, so it's great to be able to give people an, uh, you know, a place where they can sell, sell what they make or sell what they collect. and. Um, and you know, not have to be here. So, what are some of the what are some of the things that people can get here? I know we're going to talk to a lot of different vendors, but as an overview, like for people who might not have ever been here, like what should they expect when they come in? Uh, well, we have a, a wonderful antique section. Yep. Um, we have uh, uh, our second floor. We have artisan and craft vendors, so it's mm -hmm. all handmade items. Yep. Um, on the other side of the building over there, we have a, a craft beverage supply, uh, beer and wine making kits. And, uh, and lots of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, uh, craft um, merchandise, um, for, you know, for home decoration. We have ice cream, uh, coffee, hot dogs, Mexican food, nice. um, a little bit of everything. No, it's great. And uh, again, uh, the, the craftsmanship of this building as well is something that every time I walk in, I just, what's the history behind that? Uh, it's actually one of the largest um, Amish built peg and beam buildings in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, Leroy Troyer was the architect. Um, they built it back in about 2007. Um, and it was actually uh, the precursor to when they built the Ark down mm -hmm. in uh, Kentucky. Um, and this is about, it's about the footprint, footprint of a football field. Yeah. It's incredible, and I talk about when you walk in and you just look up to the roof in the middle, it's just, it really is an incredible building, and there's just, 
I don't know. There's something about it. it you're inside, but it, it feels <laughs> I sound weird now, but it has the light of feeling like you're actually outside. It's like, I, I don't know what it is. It's just got a great atmosphere here. Well, we're going to chat to some of the vendors here, find out uh, what they do specifically and uh, just highlight some of them. And uh, yeah, thanks for chatting with us. Oh, well, thank you. All right. Cammy, you are also one of the owners here. And it's been a while since I've been here, but it's such a great space. And this space right here is used for several events. In fact, didn't you just have a wedding here this weekend? We did. We had a wedding Saturday <laughs> night. We have many weddings here. It's a beautiful setting for that. So you can get married up here on stage and all of your guests can sit here in our beautiful venue. Yes, it is. And you know, I just became a grandma. That's why I'm wearing this BB t-shirt. <laughs> so do you do children's parties here too? We can, yeah. <laughs> we haven't yet, but we, sure, we certainly would be able to do that yeah okay and like you said it's absolutely beautiful and one of the things that there's a kitchen here yes. and that helps out a lot especially when you're trying to do an event yes yeah and we have a caterers kitchen mm -hmm. uh, but we also have a teaching kitchen where we can oh. uh, people can come and instruct people how to cook so that's kind of a neat part of this venue that's really great and do you have some dancing done here too as well is there line dancing there yet? is line dancing Wednesday nights from 6 to 8 every Wednesday night we have Chris Highbaugh and he comes and teaches country line dancing and then Friday nights from mm -hmm. 6 to 9, it's an open dance. So you can come and dance, just do whatever you want to. And then Thursday nights, we have Quentin Flagg performs from 6 to 8 o'clock. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. a lot of fun. Now you yeah. have a lot of events going on here as well. Tell us a little bit about them. So we have vendor events uh, once every few months, and they are huge. We have thousands. We usually have at least 60 extra vendors wow. on top of our many, many in-house vendors. And those are very, very popular. Um, we also will have a better or a home and garden show coming up March 11th mm -hmm. here on Saturday. So that'll be a good one too. Now, what are some of the events also that are coming up in the spring and summer? So we'll have vendor events coming up as well. So we'll have a spring market where there will be all kinds of different vendors, nice. you know, t-shirt makers, all kinds of things. Um, we're planning on having outside, we'll have hopefully this summer a line dancing kind of party out in the parking lot. Oh my gosh. And we'll have some food trucks and vendors out there. We also have every uh, second Saturday of the month from spring to fall, we have a flea market out in the, the parking lot. So you can come and rent a booth for 25 bucks, set up and tons of people will come and buy whatever you want to sell. That's great. Yeah. Now, Kemi, I know that this place has been closed down for a while, so thank you so much for, for opening it again, but how excited is the community to have this space again? We here on a daily basis. Thank you for yes. opening this. Thank you. It's so, so, so sad to see it closed, and we, we just love that you're open. We love what you're doing with it, so we're very excited. It makes us excited that the community is excited. Absolutely. Well, Kemi, thank you so much. I'm going to do a little bit more shopping, but I think I'm going to have to come back for the line dance there. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks. Well, one of the vendors that we're checking out here is the Third Horse Craft Beverage Supply. This is a really unique thing, and I, as more craft beers are coming out, it seems like more people are starting to turn to what can they do at home? How can they DIY their own yeah. craft beers and wines? Absolutely. Um, it's been a it's been a like a growing industry for a while. Yeah. Um, and a, a great way to get started is to get a get an equipment kit, get sure. your own uh, beer equipment kit or wine equipment kit. And you guys offer those here? Yeah, we oh, have cool. it all here. Okay. All the ingredients and equipment to craft your own beverage, whether it's beer, wine, soda, kombucha. Oh, really? Hot sauce, uh, mustards, oh, all sorts of things. Yeah. Really? Okay. I had no idea you could do all that. And, and it's something that's easy enough for anyone to learn? It really is. So getting started is pretty easy. I mean, if you can make macaroni and cheese, you can make... Okay, well, I'm not good at mac and cheese, so let's be <laughs> honest about that. I can do other things, but yeah. mac and cheese, I don't know why I can't do that right now. Well, it's just like, it's basically, if you start with a kit, it's, it's a really good place to get started. Okay. Um, kind of demystify it and get a little more comfortable with the process. Um, and then you can branch out from there and you have all the equipment to kind of craft your own personal thing. And what are the benefits of doing it on your own? Um, <clears throat> I always say the community, um, getting to know fellow home brewers and okay. winemakers is really cool. You can share it with them. Um, just the personality of it, like you can give a gift and it's something that you crafted oh, yourself. That's a great idea. Um, outside of the obvious that you get, you know, a good drink to have at home. Yeah, and do you <laughs> but guys, sharing it with friends is the best. Do you brew uh, your own here as well? Um, yeah, kind of just for samples and things okay. like that. Nothing, okay. nothing to sell. That's okay. a that's a separate licensing, but yeah, <laughs> sure. just um, just to show people kind of 
what what you can get with the end result. What goes into it. Yeah. And so this is kind of the base, but it, it goes up pretty big over here. This is kind of... Oh, yeah. This is a little bit more advanced. Yeah, these are a little more fancy fermenters. They're called conicals. Um, they kind of take a, take a step out of it, um, so you don't have to... Uh, where you would have to siphon out of a container to another container. Okay. You can kind of take the yeast out of the bottom. Um, these ones here are kind of... You can do anything in there. Um, they're more specific to beer because they, they have a lot okay. of customizable aspects to them. And how does that, how long is that process if you want to craft your own beer? It, it depends on what you're making. Um, so the beer, it's about uh, four weeks, maybe three weeks, uh, okay. depending on if you're bottling or kegging. Sure. Um, the wine is anywhere from four to eight weeks. Um, and then, you know, the, the bigger reds that you're making, you want to age them longer. Okay. So that'll take a little more time. So yeah, so like 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> but you can get all the supplies here. Can people order online with you as well? Yeah, um, we just got our website up okay. um, just, just around Christmas time. It's uh, thirdhorsehomebrew.com. Um, yeah, and it's, it's still pretty new, so we're still trying to drive traffic yeah. to it. But. but you're here on site, so people can, you, you can kind of guide them through the process yeah. as well. We're here every day but Sunday. Okay. Um, yeah, Monday, Monday 10 to 4, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 6, and Saturday 10 to 4. Now, I'm a hands-on learner, so if I wanted to do this me process, too. can you, like, can you come and help me with it? Yeah. No, <laughs> Is I, that I an option? No, I absolutely can. We brew here, um, I don't know, a couple times a month. Uh, we have a couple brewing events that we do every year. Oh, neat. Uh, one coming Great. up in May. Um, that's called Big Brew Day. Um, that'll be here probably starting about 9 o'clock. But Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and I'm the same way. I, it's a lot easier when you can see it, Absolutely. as opposed to just reading about it. You can go online and read a bunch of stuff, which is great and helpful. Um, but, but seeing it in I, process yeah, is yeah, really yeah, really kind of uh, makes it make sense a little bit. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for showing what you have to offer here. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. So I'm here inside the Artisan Market, and I'm here with Andrea. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Okay, first of all, I got to hold up this sign because this is hilarious inside of here. And I feel like if my wife saw this, she would absolutely buy this for me right now. So, if a man speaks in the forest and no woman hears him, is he still wrong? So, uh, my wife would insist that <laughs> I am still wrong. Oh, no. No, no. no. I'm just messing around. <laughs> so, uh, tell me a little bit, first of all, about the artisan market. Like, what actually goes on in here? So. Sure. So, here in the Napanee Artisan Market, we have a mixture of all different types of vendors. Um, mm -hmm. Everything is handmade by local artists. Um, we have things from macrame to floral arrangements to paintings, photography, pottery, wood turning, you name it, we have it. And this is a space for people who uh, may have a, like a smaller collection of things that it's kind of a, a lot of artists mixed in together. Right? Yes, it sure is. It gives the convenience of one central location for all the artists to gather without having to upkeep an entire booth. And what I love about it then too is that they don't have to be here for when it's being sold. You just grab it and go down to check out. You sure do. Which yep. is such a huge thing for people that they might do this on the side, they're trying to build it up yeah. and they can still have their full-time job or they might be a stay-at-home parent and Absolutely. they can do it. So it's a great and way to earn extra money. Yeah. Kind of while well, people are just shopping here. For sure, and it's a good alternative to being at a craft show every weekend. This gives True. them a brick and mortar place to kind of mm -hmm. come and send their clients in between those events. Or wood. Yes. Yeah, as a, no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> a wood place. So you're one of the artists, so I want to see am. what you've got going yes, on here. Yes. So. so I've got some um, handmade signs here. Mm -hmm. um, create them from start to finish. Um, start out with a four by eight sheet of plywood. Yeah. My husband lovingly brings it home and <laughs> him and his buddies will cut it down for me. Nice. And um, we go through the sanding and painting process. And yeah. We do custom orders, fun things like that. So. so it's very camping, outdoor oriented. Why is your passion with that? Um, I love to be outdoors. Our yeah. family loves to camp. Um, look forward every summer to taking the kids out to the lake and yeah. do do things outdoors with them. Nice. Um, I do do other theme things, but this just happens to be the season that's approaching. Yeah, so. that's true. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, thanks yeah. so much for You're showing welcome. us around. You're welcome. Um, I think it's thanks awesome that the Napanee Artisan Market is here for people inside Southgate Crossing. And, yes. you know, I hope if there's other people watching who also make stuff that maybe they can get in touch and see if they can have their stuff here. Absolutely. So. We're always looking for more vendors and to, to grow our collection in here. This, it's always a blessing to have nice. have new people join us. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. 
When you walk into Southgate Crossing, one of the things that you are overwhelmed with is the delicious smell coming Thank here you. from Soto's, a wonderful Mexican cuisine. Yes. Uh, we have Donna here who's going to tell us all about this wonderful uh, I am. food. I can Thank smell you. it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, my name's Donna, owner of Soto's. Our food truck, I Way, also comes out of here, parked at Concord Mall, Fridays and Saturdays from 5 to 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Usually around that time, we're pretty sold out. If you don't make it by then, we always can work with you. We are here. <laughs> we are here though, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6 p.m. So you can always find us inside of here if you don't find us at our Concord Mall location. And I've heard of your food truck before, and yes. I, I say yes. it wrong. So, <laughs> wait, wait, what do you yes. say? Is, I, hey, I, Louis, hey yes. Louis? A lot of people, but it's not. No, and it is I weigh. Our I H's way. are silent. I, mm -hmm. um, I should know this. I took like three years of Spanish. I <laughs> yeah, so it is I weigh, and our food truck does come out of here. Um, we do a lot of events with our food truck, as you know. If you've seen us, we are downtown Elkhart a lot doing their events. We do a lot of LaGrange events, is which where we started our food truck, and it usually originally came out of LaGrange County. Oh, wow. um, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, Mom and I have been in the business for over 15 years. Wow. Cooking, Mom and I. Um, yeah, so now I have a husband <laughs> who I married into, great, and he's our main cook. Um, back there cooking for us here and at our food truck. I like that, Donna. You're yeah. kind of in the front and he, your husband's in the yes, back cooking. Yes, yes, And it, it is a family affair. It is. It is very family. I mean, from the front to the back. Either you'll see me here up front or you'll see my little brother, David, and his um, girlfriend. Um, other than that, you probably will meet one of us. So <laughs> say hi. We would love to talk to you guys. Um, like I said, you'll probably meet one of our family members here. Now you offer lunch and dinner. What are some of the favorites of your yes. customers? And I will show you guys here soon too. Um, we are specialized in masa, which is handmade tortillas, handmade gorditas. Everything is almost handmade, prepared to the moment wow. that you guys ask for it. Mom is from Mexico City, which is where a lot of our plates originate from. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so up here we have our Hey Huey tacos, which are food truck tacos, nice. handmade tortillas slapped over the flat top on melted mozzarella cheese, Ooh. stuffed with your choice of meat, topped with guacamole. Guacamole is fresh, always. Ooh. Nice. Yes. I love that. You know, one of the things I love about when a family makes the food, it seems like there's a lot of love that goes yes. That's like the extra, that's the yes. special yes. ingredient. It's exactly. the love that goes yes. into it, yes. right? I think I remember being eight, nine years old making my first taco, and mom's like, yep, you got it. We're, <laughs> we're, yeah, um, we're, we're going to continue with this. So ever since that, I mean, we just took off, and mom and I have, have really done a spin on this. Now here in Southgate Crossing, I know there's also events upstairs too. Do you guys even cater for some of that also? Of course, okay. yes. Um, we have plenty of events. I know that this year we've really kicked up on some events here at Southgate. Um, I think last week we had a pretty large one. Um, and that's not the only thing we have that we cater up there. We cater a bunch of things, but catering upstairs, you can always request us, call okay. us, email us, um, and we work with you. We do buffet style. We do like a hibachi style where we're cooking tacos in front nice. of you. Yeah, that's Burritos, great. Burritos, quesadillas. <laughs> oh I mean, my God, I'm getting so hungry. I know, I saw you rubbing <laughs> your hands, Courtney. Can we try some? Yes, of course, okay. of course. Let's so, do that. Yes. So up here I have our Hey Huey tacos mm -hmm. and then our street tacos. And then we, we love to pair it with a grilled cebollita and a grilled chile asado, which, oh. it, yes. If you can, I, I can smell it, so I know I you know. guys can. You well, can't smell it, we can smell it. Well, we have to get a table. And yes. we have to take oh everybody. Gosh, yeah. Look at all the food coming. We'll right, have let's, to, oh, let's go. Let's yes. go. Let's Here's go. that for you. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Well, Donna, this looks amazing, and we can't wait to start eating it. But tell us again what everything is, starting with the ones that I have right <laughs> in front of me. Yes. <laughs> of course, and those are our food truck tacos, okay. our Iway tacos. They are gluten-free. Um, all nice. our masa is gluten-free. I would like to mention that, which is also our gordita here. Mm -hmm. But our Iway taco, those are our food truck tacos. They are slapped over mozzarella cheese. Ooh. They're oh. smothered on guacamole. <laughs> stuffed with, with this, these here, they're stuffed with our flank steak, which oh, is what all our, all our tacos are made out okay. of. Um, they are amazing, yes. Mm. And what is they this? They smell one? amazing. And thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm and like, I'm then <laughs> tell us faster because I need to and eat. These are, of course, then these are our street tacos topped with onions and cilantro, like paired with their cebollita and their chile asado. If you 
If, if you, you like know, spice, you know. Yes. this is yours. If you know, you know. Oh, done. So I've never said, okay, I know yes, that's an onion, but what, what, is, what do you call it and it, how do you eat it? Yeah, you so eat it? you eat it. I personally will eat almost all of it up until like probably right here. Wow. Some Sharp people, there. some people eat it all, but usually you start at the top. Mm -hmm. You sprinkle a little bit of lime and salt. Ah, okay. And then you just, oh, you, you're, you take a bite of your taco, that. you take a bite of your, your, your grilled onion. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Okay. And, and then, then, are those tamales? They're tamales. Tamales, yeah. I love tamales. <laughs> These I here are tell. green tamales. Um, Mom makes them fresh almost every three days and they do sell out. I do like to say that our tamales, for some reason, never make it more than a day. So can you so, pre-order those? Yes, you can. Okay. And I have just started mentioning that on our social media that please, please, please pre-order our tamales. You, we don't sell them by a dozen, but they are sold individually and we can always work with you. Awesome. Now I see we have a red and a green. Yes. Hot sauce. Yes. So <laughs> green is our. Which one is which? The green which one is, is our avocado based. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Our mild, our our favorite, I would say. Um, and then our red one is full of ch red chili peppers. Okay. Nice. So Careful. these aren't too spicy. Just themselves. No. 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 You add this on. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. None of our food has any spice on it. Not even our guacamole, unless you add it to you. Yeah. Um, I love the sodas, and I love the one there. It's a non-alcoholic sangria. Sangria. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I have to try that. It's pretty great. It's nice <laughs> and sweet. <laughs> yeah. Like a sangria without the alcohol, unfortunately. But then there are jarritos, and then we have our fresh guacamole. Oh, That's nice. That's gorgeous. Yes, thank you. And then a strawberry milkshake. And, and our strawberry milkshake. These milkshakes are made fresh? From made fresh, made with real fruit. We have nice. strawberry, mango, banana, you name what kind of fruit. We have it probably in our okay. in our kitchen. Um, we also make, make freshly uh, pressed juices on the weekend. Nice. Um, beet juice. Kind of a nice for yes. those people who are coming in early of in the course. morning. A nice wake me up. Yes, okay. yes, of course. You know, you can pair it well with the tamal that we have here too. That's great. Well, Donna, thank you so much. Thank we are you. so I'm excited I'm to start. Of course, go down ahead. Here. <laughs> yes. Um, but, and please say hi to the family and tell them thank you. I for will. Us. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're going to start. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I want to put any hot sauce here, on it just yet. I can yet. actually open this for you. Okay. Wow. Delicious. Mm. I'm going to try right. some yes. of this. It's yes, so yes, good. Yes. You know what I'm trying to get? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. I'm going to put it top anymore. <laughs> I know. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Since working with Courtney, I feel like there aren't many things that you haven't done. <laughs> but this is one of them. This is one you got to do before, That's, but yes, not me. But not you. And so we are here at Rocket Science Ice Cream and Coffee. And Kyle, you're the manager here. You've nope. been the manager for a year. Nope. So how cool is it to be like the manager of this kind it, of ice cream? It's a lot of fun. It's cool to make the ice creams. It's a fun experience. And yeah. Now, it, very specifically, I mean, rocket science, it, it's not rocket science, but it is because it's really unique. What is the difference between a regular ice cream shop and what rocket science offers? So we actually make our ice cream fresh. Everything is freshly made here. We use the cream base from Custer's that's located in Michigan. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we put in your ingredients, stir everything together, and then we flash freeze it with the liquid nitrogen. The liquid nitrogen, the that's li the key. So what makes, like the nick liquid nitrogen like what makes it so special then uh it every uh it just flash freezes it it's instant so and it's, everything goes in liquid yep. and then magic flash freezes yep. and so it gives it a different texture yes it's it, like a hard ice cream mm -hmm. it's not okay. soft or anything okay and you guys have a variety of flavors do they transition out to you guys what, what's some of the favorites some of the favorites uh the customer favorites actually the peanut butter bash Ooh. Okay. followed by like the turtle the death by oh, chocolate that's yeah right. that's what i'm making we should switch okay. to the turtle death here and you also have coffee we do have coffees yeah. that's uh we got frappes lattes mochas and anything you want Right. And, and Courtney, I the hot dogs. <laughs> <'Cause> they, <laughs> I did. Courtney, can you say they have oh, hot, hot dogs, dogs here? <laughs> so you also have hot dogs, chili we do. dogs, and we got chili dogs, <laughs> Chicago dogs, classic okay. hot dogs. Okay. What's anything. the hillbilly dog? <laughs> That's uh, the hillbilly dog is actually just like chili dog with like coleslaw on okay. top. It's very oh, popular. Oh, no. I've never had that before. Is it good? It is very good. It's like the most popular flavor here. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then one of the things she also hide, I'm just telling on Courtney today, are the waffle cones. The waffle cones, yes. I always say, and, and you have different uh, themes for, and today's Wednesday when we're actually filming this, and it's, uh, it's waffle cone upgrade day. It is waffle so cone. That's why I was like, okay, we can do that. <laughs> 
What are some of the other special days that you guys have? So we have like Monday motivation where you get a dollar off coffees, and then Thursday Thursdays where you get like a dollar off bubble teas. Okay. Friday Franks you get uh, chips and drinks with your uh, hot dog for free. That's nice. So. so what's also awesome is people can come here. You can get hot dogs. You can get ice cream. But you can also take something home. Yeah, that's this was really cool. cool. Yes, the bubble tea, uh, the bub uh, the ice cream kits are an amazing gift for people. For like Christmas, Valentine's Day, anything. Any we got, day. It's, we, it's good for. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We got like a bunch of different ingredients in here. We got waffle cone, uh, waffle balls, cups, everything you need to make an ice cream at home. So we, so we just need to add rocket science just, ice cream. Yep. Can we do that? Can we get some so, rocket science ice cream? We can. Okay. Kyle, you are a rocket scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. It's delicious. I know. Thank I can't you. wait to try. So I got the s'mores. Okay. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to try this. It's smells Courtney, good what did you too. get again? Um, I got the what did I get? The, the white chocolate raspberry. White chocolate raspberry. And people could even make up their own concoctions yep. too. Oh, it's mm. so good. Mm. You like okay. that one? You are absolutely right, oh. Kyle. This oh, is absolutely so delicious. Thank you. Oh wow. Gosh. So I, we were watching you make it back though. It's so cool to watch. And cold. It's so I, I, cold. Yeah. I was about to say, do you get cold? <laughs> um, it gets a little cold around the hands if you do it for a little bit, but it's not too bad. The nitrogen goes to like the bottom of the bowl. So once you keep it at the, if you keep your hands at the top, it's fine. Right. So. Now Courtney and I choose, chose something off of the classic menu, yep. but people can come and create their own as well. Yep. You choose your flavoring, add anything you want to it. Just create your own ice cream. All right. Well, I love this. I'm so I excited we finally yeah. got to try this out. I so. know. Nothing like coming to shop, go out to eat, and then have dessert. What <laughs> more can you ask for? Gotta have your dessert too, right? Gotta yep. have it. All right. Well, Kyle, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, thank you guys Kyle. for coming out. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm going to go eat all this now. <laughs> Boy, did I have a lot of fun shopping over here. There's so many vendors, so many things to get. Yep. Um, I know that my grandson is going to be really excited when <laughs> Bibi comes back because I got a couple of things for him. But it's so great to see this place open again yeah, and, absolutely. and thriving. Yeah, absolutely. This has always been one of my favorite places to shop and to visit. Mm -hmm. I know they even have you know different activities that they do on site, which is one of the things that they continue to expand on. So this is just a phenomenal place. And I know you love the structure itself. I do love the structure. And uh, I just wonder who has to clean it. <laughs> you know, when you look around and you look Get up my here, extended this roof. duster. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh I yeah. can say, as long as it's not BB, I'm okay with that. And you know, BB's people, not cleaning. A lot of people don't know this, but this building is actually the same size as Courtney's house. Oh, my God. And that's God. how she's able to have four million Christmas trees in there every year. 81. Oh, just, oh, is that all? Sorry. That's yeah. normal. Um, so, all right. So, yeah, well, it was a great time here. And Southgate Crossing, make sure you come and support it. And what I really love about it is it's a chance for people who might have a passion to do something small. Yeah. It gives them a space to be able to sell that and meet the public with it without having to, like, buy their own store or rent their own store. So it's really great. So I love Such it. Such a great space for our community. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Experience Michiana is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the State of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.